how in the second and even third book, we only hear of Rob's triumphs and tribulations through other individuals. The show had to create some new scenes to better expand on his character. Season 2 opens with a show exclusive scene where Rob visits Jamie in his prison pen. At this point, Rob has learned the truth of Joffrey's true parentage from a letter by Stannis Baratheon. When confronting Jamie about it, he pieces together why his brother was pushed from the window and why his father was executed. Something worth noting is that aside from Jamie's capture, he and Rob have never broken words in the books, at least to my knowledge. Jamie was also kept secured in Riverrun as opposed to a prison pen deep in the northern encampment. The scene where he spoke with the Lannister messenger is somewhat close to the second book, however, there are some differences worth noting here. In the second book, Great John Umber was present, as was Edmure Tully, who was already introduced as early as in the first book. Lord Karstark was also present before storming off, and instead of a camp, Rob was addressing the messenger in Riverrun. In fact, the messenger Rob was addressing is Cleos Frey, son of Gemma and Eamon Frey, and nephew of Tywin Lannister, whereas in the show, it's an original character named Alton Lannister. His terms in the show is actually a shortened version of what he gave in the second book as well as his squire's presence being omitted from the show altogether. In the second book, one of the terms he gave included the return of his father's great sword, Ice, as well as more detail on the terms and how each of the prisoners of war would be returned on both sides. Another bit also included hostages the Lannisters are to give to show they are willing to honour these terms. During a conversation with his mother and Edmure, Rob mentioned sending Theon to Pike to convince his father to lend their support against Catelyn's wishes. The show, however, gave some insight to the scene as it is Theon who convinces Rob to let him speak with his father and sway him to their cause. Rob's scene with his mother is somewhat close to the second book. The main omission is Edmure's presence as the show had yet to introduce him at this point. In the show, Catelyn was more vocal about her apprehension over Rob sending Theon to Pike. Beyond that, the conversation in the show is roughly close with certain details altered here and there. Another piece of info worth noting is that Rob sends his mother as an envoy to negotiate with Renly Baratheon for an alliance. The difference is, in the show, she originally wanted to return to Bran and Recon before Rob entrusted her with his task, whereas in the second book, she was a bit more reluctant as she wanted to remain at her father's side, but Rob insisted as she is the only one he trusts with his task. He even jokes about sending great John Umber in her place. Now somewhere close to the middle of season 2 is where the overall context of Rob's storyline is greatly altered when compared to his book counterpart. In A Clash of Kings, Tyrion tells Sansa of Rob's victory at the village of Oxcross where he crushed Stephen Lannister's army in a surprise attack. The show briefly shows us only the beginning and end sequence due to budget constraints. Around episode 4 in the show, after Rob's army wins another victory, he and Roots Bolton are discussing their next course of action. Due in part to the supplies running low, Roos implies a suggestion of execution for the prisoners they have no use for and torture for the captured officers for information. Rob quickly shuts down any entertainment of the idea partially because he disapproves of torturing and executing prisoners. Now this is not only due to his sense of honour as in the books, they actually elaborate in more detail as to why torturing and killing prisoners of war is an action Rob does not wish to risk. The enemy holds captives of their own and he does not want to give them an excuse to harm them and most importantly, his sisters. Rob then meets a foreign healer from Volantis by the name of Talisa. The two would actually get to know one another during season 2 in a few show exclusive scenes. Before I continue, something I need to point out is that the woman Rob sacrificed a much needed alliance for is a completely different character named Jane Westerling. The circumstances behind this has also been altered. In short, Talisa is an original character solely made for the show, but made to fill a similar role to Jane. Portions of Rob's storyline from the third book was even adapted rather early into the second season all the way up to his marriage. The sixth episode has a fairly long sequence. The first one starts with Rob greeting his fellow northerners. This is followed up with a conversation between him and Talisa before they are interrupted by the arrival of Catelyn. As Rob converses privately with his mother, she notices her son's eyes on Talisa and advises him to remain committed to his sworn oath. This is before Roos shows up to inform them of Theon's betrayal. Once he learns of this, 
the imprisonment of his younger brothers and his weapon instructor's death, he hastens to go north. It's Roos Bolton, however, that manages to talk him out of it as they are still at war with the Lannisters and convinces Rob to let his own son take back Winterfell. While it will be in the very distant future, rest assured that Roos Bolton will have his own character video. That much I promise. For now, I should briefly point out that the show gave him greater prominence compared to the first two books and is someone whose counsel Rob actually keeps at times, whereas his book counterpart was someone Catelyn did not fully trust and advised Rob to keep him at arm's length. While in the show, Rob heeds Roos with the Theon situation, Roos in the books does not have this much sway with giving Rob counsel. Even though Rob charges him with the task of having his bastard take back Winterfell, Rob would eventually decide to suspend his campaign in the south as routing out the Ironborn became the priority for both him and those who followed him. In the show, Alton Lannister returns to inform Rob of the Queen's reply. Rob, of course, has Alton treated appropriately due to his role as an envoy. Due to the growing amount of prisoners, they would have to temporarily place him with Jaime. This is followed up with a conversation with Talisa, whom Rob asks to join her as they are making preparations to journey for the crag, the seat of House Westling. Something I need to bring up is that at this point in the second book, Tyrion sends a few specialized criminals in disguise to blend in with the Lannister soldiers as escorts for the envoy Cleos Frey. Their task was to stage a prison break to free Jaime. This was cut from the show. Another show exclusive scene has Rob accompanied by Talisa after dealing with the enemy surrender at the crag. Here he recalls his father's wisdom about the Lord of Winterfell's responsibility towards his people and what fear and bravery meant. His father's wisdom scene was lifted from the first book and it was to Rob's younger brother, Bran. Personally, I like this addition for two reasons. It further builds Rob's character as him trying to emulate his father and Ned himself would have imparted this knowledge to all his sons at one point or another. The Siege of the Crag was only referenced in the second book as we only learn of Rob's victory near the end and the brief details behind it in the third. Despite his victory and the surrender of the Crag, Rob took a battle wound and was tended to by Jane of House Westerling. The show glosses over Rob's reaction to the supposed deaths of Bran and Rickon as this revelation gets pushed to season 3. The third book actually elaborates on this via Catelyn's point of view and why, in that moment of weakness, along with his injury, Rob ended up coupling with Jane, who sought to console him. Once Rob realized what he had done, he was faced with a dilemma. Either remain committed to his oath to Walder Frey, or save Jane's honor and take her as his wife. He chose to marry her to preserve her honor, partially because were she to have a child from their union, he did not want his son or daughter to go through what his half-brother, John, had endured his whole life. The other being that he had dishonored her and it was an error he needed to set right due to his sense of honor. This lost him the support of House Frey when word reached him of what Rob had done. We see hints of this through Catelyn's eyes as the Freys hastily left Riverrun. Because Rob was aware of his own mistake, he could not even chastise his own mother for releasing the Kingslayer in the hopes of a safe exchange for his sisters. Even more so, since he learned why she did so, as news of Bran and Rickon's supposed death reached her as well when it did. It's here that he forgives her for this, as he too have committed a mistake of his own. Now in the show, when he learns of what Catelyn had done regarding the release of Jaime Lannister, a furious Rob has her imprisoned and has Roose Bolton sent another handful of men after him. Compared with the source material, where Jaime was freed and escaped from Riverrun, Edmure was the one who had Catelyn imprisoned and had riders sent to pursue the Kingslayer. But the scene that cemented the alteration of his character for the worst is his private conversation with Talisa. Here Talisa shares her backstory with him and why she became a nurse. Rob then confessed that he doesn't want to marry Lord Frey's daughter as he has fallen for Talisa. Because she feels the same about him, the two wind up coupling. During his final scene in Season 2, Rob tells his mother that he's going to marry Talisa. Catelyn shares with him how his father and her had to build their relationship as they were strangers who married because their families needed an alliance in the war against Ares, the Mad King. She also cautions Rob against the mistake he's about to make by taking Talisa as a wife. Rob refuses to heed her by hinting at her own betrayal and marries Talisa in secret. 
Of all the changes made, this is the one alteration I take issue with regarding Rob's storyline. Rob and Talisa's love story comes off as something more akin to a romance that appeals more to modern sensibilities. He willingly risks his alliance, the entire war, and his family because he has feelings for a foreign nurse as opposed to his book counterpart who chose to save another woman's honour at the cost of his own. The series of ill-fated circumstances, including the loss of his most valued prisoner, his own moment of weakness, impossible choices, along with being a slave to his sense of honour, like his father before him, these as a whole was what led to his tragic demise. The difference is, his book counterpart was in a situation where that one moment of weakness brought him to a crossroads. There's also his youth to take into consideration. His show version willingly cast aside his alliance, which paints him as more selfish and thoughtless. And what's humorous is the show version is supposed to be older and more hardened in comparison given the way they wrote him at times. Instead of his sense of honor costing him everything as it did his father, Rob's love for Talisa, or lust, depending on whom you ask, is what factors in the end he and his mother meet at the twins. Looking back, this single choice actually alters the entire context of Rob's eventual downfall. Pushing the news of the supposed deaths of Rob's younger brothers to a much later stage, along with the omission of his battle injury, also took away his spiral into despair, leading to that crucial moment of weakness. While the doomed romance arc may appeal to a certain audience, the theme of honour and its cost is missing, and it's this change for love that makes Rob as a character all the worse for it. While omitting house whistling may have been done for budget reasons as well as the intent to make Rob look less gullible, this change would also tie into why the northern storyline was ruined in subsequent seasons. In fact, another way they could have Rob's injury take place was to have someone attempt to assassinate him. Honestly, I'm surprised neither Tyrion, Tywin or any of Rob's enemies even made an attempt to slip in an assassin long before the Red Wedding. In the books, it was Jane who saw to his injury based on what information was given, but since they established Talisa as a trained nurse, the show missed a very good opportunity to play the scene out for two reasons. The first would be that Rob's Bannermen are more likely to trust an experienced nurse that Rob has taken a liking to over a daughter of a house who has sworn fealty to the Lannisters. The second reason would also help to right the mistake the show was making when they replaced Rob's motivation for marrying Talisa 